Nick Nell, Brooke Thompson. I agree, Nick Nell, Brooke Thompson. I agree, Nick Nell, Brooke. I agree, Nick Nell, Brooke Thompson. Going with civil engineering, where only 0.3 of us are American Indian or Alaska Native, and 0.07, that's one out of 13,000, are American Indian. Schools don't understand why I have to go to funerals so often, why I take me to this people's day off, or my, that my traditional knowledge is legitimate as there is. when the fish don't get enough water, they start dying. And like 2002, we had a huge fish kill. Or, I don't want to say any statistics, you guys know, it's not wrong. But the government estimates about 30,000, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot more than that, just because of me personally being there and walking up and down the riverbanks and seeing, you know, lines and lines of dead salmon up on the river. And it shouldn't be like that because, you know, the grills are all rotted and stuff, so not even the bears can eat them. And it's just really disheartening because salmon is really what our whole culture is centered around, salmon and acorns. And, you know, they need water as much as we need them. And we have been there for so long and have been taking care of the salmon and been living with the salmon as they've been taking care of us, too. And, you know, salmon don't have a voice, but we do. But our voices so often get shut down. And I think this is great because, you know, when you have so many people here, it's hard to shut their voices down coming together to say, you know, water is life, this is important to us. And, you know, it's not just this tribe who's having troubles. A lot of people are here because their own tribes are having trouble like we are. Not only for us, but this is for the earth, for our grandchildren, for our great-grandchildren, for our great-great-grandchildren. And like even the other people who haven't been here for thousands of years, their grandchildren are gonna be here too. And they need to start taking into consideration what they do now has a large impact on what their grandchildren live and the life they live. And, you know, we can't live one without the earth and we need each other. And it seems like right now, especially with like this oil pipeline and just like these corporations are taking advantage of us. And corporations don't see the future. They only see the present and the now. And you know, we really need to stand up and fight back, and that's why I'm here, is to help be a protector with the rest of the tribe here. Indigenous people are really here to fight for the environment and fight for climate, for everyone's prosperity. But also, Indigenous peoples are especially vulnerable to climate change, because my, I walk, my grandfather, who's no longer with us, R.G. Thompson, he was one of the last language speakers of my language, the Yurok language. And there's so much knowledge that is carried through the language itself. It's a different way. The language carries a different way of thinking completely. And it holds a lot of information about plants and animals just in the words itself. Nonetheless, the history that was passed down. And then seventh generation, just this very simple concept that many indigenous peoples have that, you know, when we do an action, when we're making decisions, we should not only consider about how that's going to affect us personally in our communities, but how that's going to affect our generations, seven generations ahead of us. How will me taking a stance against a certain policy or supporting a certain aspect of living affect my great, 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 great grandchildren? And I feel like a lot of times when it comes to climate discussions, we don't have that mindset that far out. And Definitely, if we considered multiple generations ahead of time, you know, decades ago, we wouldn't be facing the current issues we are now. For the tribal people, the result has been disastrous. Without recourse to their traditional diet of salmon, rates of diabetes and heart disease have soared. It's really hard to emphasize just how important the salmon are to us. I mean, for me, it's not just a food source. It's also the connection to my ancestors. Today, we are joined by Brooke Thompson, an engineering master's student at Stanford. Brooke fights for water and Native American rights, really on the front lines with policy and political action. For me, I grew up really integrated into my culture, so images of mascots affected me less, but I saw how it affected other people's perceptions of me. So when these people I was sitting at the table with were talking about the Indian mascot, 
they're not going to think of me as a student at Stanford when they think of the Indians. They're going to think of the stereotypical image and their sports games. And I've come across that time and time again through high school, through growing up, through also living in Washington, D.C., where other people have a reduced image of me. And the only thing they know about Native Americans is through these mascots and through these stereotypes and not actually who I am as a person. I grew up with my family in Northern California. These are some pictures of me and my grandfather and my dad on the bottom left, me and my dad fishing on the bottom right, and me and some of my regalia with my cousins in the top right, and then um, one of the biggest fish, the salmon I've caught on the top left. Good morning. Uh, before I start, just because a lot of my family can never make it to my speeches, when I count down from three to one, would everyone just say hi Brooks family for me and I'm gonna record it for them? Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Hi! Thompson, and thank you so much for listening to me this morning. 